today we're going to go over Super McKenna's 4-2-3-1, a tactic that scored over three goals a game and absolutely dominated wherever he went. Let's get into the tactic first today. I'm going to try something different today. We are going to go over the tactics first, all three of the variants, so be sure to check out all three. Of course, I want to also thank all of the wonderful names coming down the screen. Over 2,200 of you guys right now have come over to the Patreon, so it's clearly worth it. You get over 10 perks as well, including access to all three of these tactics in one simple file download. You get the tactics early, you get the videos early, you get priority in the tactic and rebuild requests, you get help with your tactics, I even make tactics for you, and also you get Discord perks, Twitch perks, and access to the current giveaway, which is definitely worth entering. So check it out, the link is going to be in the description, and also you can see my name on the screen. But let's talk about these player roles then. So it is going to be a sweeper keeper who is simply going to be on the support of instruction. Now you could argue this could be on attacking, but in my opinion, especially for the game, he does suit a more supportive role. So we are going to stick with that. Up next is obviously going to be Clark, specifically made for him, Harry Clark himself, the wing back on support, simply on run wide and get further forwards. Now as we talk through the variants today, there are a couple where he might feature a bit more defensively than this, but as a whole, a balanced system, he is simply going to be on support. We then go with the Twan Zebe and also the Burgers of the team. That is going to be two central defenders simply on the default. Now again, I didn't really, well, I didn't really see, I don't really see much out of them. I mean, obviously, sometimes you do see Wolf Fender actually go on a little bit of a drive now and then, but not to the point where I feel like it, you know, is needed to have a dribble more instruction on him or a ball playing defender sort of vibe. So we are going to go with two central defenders. Now where it really livens up this back line is going to be Leaf Davis. Obviously, we know how good he is in obviously that championship season. Absolutely killing it. Complete wing back on attack on cross more often, dribble more, and also run wide with the ball. And also naturally he's going to get added four more default instructions, cross from the byline, get further forward, stay wider, and also roam from position. So very, very good role on him, and it has to be a complete wing back in my opinion. I've only been lucky enough to go and see one of the games this season, which was against Leicester in that 1-1 draw. Not the best game to go and see, I must say, but we got a point. We'll take it and move on. It is what it is. But let me know in the comments right now. Are Ipswich going to get promoted? I need to know your opinions. Going over to the midfield, we're going to have two DMs. On the left, it is going to be Luongo. Now, this player obviously is going to be a little bit more defensively. He's going to be on defend, on tackle harder, and also mark tighter. And next to him is going to be Sam Morsey, another DM. But on this one, he's going to be on support, but also on dribble more. So he's going to make the occasional run into this midfield and almost link it up into Connor Chaplin a lot easier. But we're not going to worry because we've still got this player here who is going to sit back and obviously do his defensive duties. He is also going to be on tackle harder, by the way. On the right-hand side is going to be Wes Burns. He's simply going to be a winger on attack on the default instructions. Nothing wrong with this at all, but sometimes the default is the best because you also are going to be getting these five default instructions. He's going to be dribbling more. He's going to be getting further forward, staying wider. He's going to be playing a very vital part of the team anyway, so we don't need to overcomplicate things. On the left is going to be Broadhead. He's going to obviously be inverted, so he's going to cut inside with the ball. He's going to be getting further forwards, and he's actually going to be told to obviously cross the ball a little less often. So the reason why this player is going to be inverted is because Leif Davis is going to really charge on forward and almost act like a winger in some parts of the game. So we don't want to have a bit of an overload going over there when it's unnecessary. In the midfield is going to be an attacker midfield player, Yukata Chaplin, on take more risks and simply roam from position. And to finish it off up top, it is going to be George Hurst or Caden Jackson, if you prefer, the advance forward simply on the default instruction. So over to the team instructions. If you are enjoying so far, be sure to leave a like on the video. Let's try and smash this video too. We'll go with 70 likes. Why not? I'm going to say right away it is based off a clean slate style on the tactical the tactical style is a clean slate attacking mentality sorry the attacking mentality is going to be very very aggressive and we are going to talk about this right now so it's going to be pass into space and overlap left for Leif Davis very crucial to have that on this team because obviously he does contribute massively in this team as we are going to see later on the video be sure to stay tuned to see them results because you don't want to download a tactic where you don't know how good it's going to be so be sure to check them out as well it's going to be overlap left we're going to have the directness set to shorter and also the tempo set to slightly higher so not a maximum out temper by any means of the imagination, but definitely got enough firepower to really take the game to the opposition. We're also going to run at defence and also be more expressive. So it is going to be attacking in that side, very, you know, counter-attacking inspired, very aggressive on the ball as well. And the final third is simply going to be on low crosses. Transition, not going to be too complicated to be honest. It is going to be counter-press, counter, distribute to the centre-backs while taking short goal kicks. So quite straightforward. And lastly, and I believe I have got this right from what I have seen, definitely the high press line of engagement and definitely that high defensive line. I would definitely say that from what I've seen this season. More often on the trigger press, prevent short goalkeeper distribution. It does work a little bit better when you have got Caden Jackson on, especially in this game I'm talking about, because he has obviously has got that speed to him. And we are also going to get stuck in, because I do see the odd challenge being put in from the McKenna boys. So, let's go over to a more attacking variant right now. Now, this is going to be a more attacking variant for you who maybe 
you're in a game you're nil nil or maybe you're one nil down you try to chase the game i recommend getting all three today because if you're playing agenda especially in the championship 46 games as i did you need to be transferring between these three to make sure you're as consistent as what you're going to see these results are because you can't just be one simple tactic so the goalkeeper is now going to be a sweeper keeper on attack so we have upgraded him from support to the attack and duty the wing back in harry clark is also now going to be on attack on cross more often dribble more and also run wide with the ball just because now we are trying to be a little bit more confident on the ball i have introduced two ball playing defenders instead of central defenders now this might go a little bit away from the ipswich sort of team but to actually get the result in fm which obviously is what these variants are for this is going to be the transition the complete wing back is going to remain exactly the same because he already does so much for the team the midfield is now going to feature a deep line playmaker on the left on support on tackle harder and also mark tighter and the dm on the right remains unchanged because he is going to attack a little bit by dribbling more but also obviously he's going to do his defensive duty on the right hand side is going to be the default winger as we spoke about previously and on the left hand side the inverted winger now goes to attack on cross less often so a lot of the play is going to be done down this left hand side of the field in the middle we get rid of the attacker midfield player and introduce a shadow striker which sometimes does transition to almost playing a bit like a 4-2-4 because Connor Chaplin will drift up into this area these will be your two and obviously your two in the midfield there he is simply going to be on roam from position and to finish it off player role wise is going to be George Hur simply on attack no no extra sorry instructions over to the team instructions for the attack and variant again it is going to be attacking again it is going to be the clean slate as you probably can expect we are going to go to pass into space we're going to overlap left and also overlap right on the ball because now we have got clark playing a lot more attacking on that right hand side so it makes sure just try and get them both involved because we are trying to chase the game get some goals and really get the ball moving we're going to play it from the back now as well because we have got two ball playing defenders and obviously we have got that deep line playmaker who can pick up the ball from them and get the ball moving very quickly so it sort of makes sense to do so but we're shorter on the directness and the tempo is now gonna be maxed out because we are really trying to be aggressive in this game the low crosses are going to remain and it is quite common sense but of course we are not going to change anything here because it's very very attacking anyway transition is going to be very very similar but it is going to be counter press counter we are going to add distribute quickly because we are in a rush to get a goal we're going to play to the center backs again and of course we are going to take short goal kicks and lastly a little something we can talk about we are obviously going to go with the high press and line of engagement with that higher line with a maxed out trigger press prevent short goalkeeper distribution get stuck in and step up more now if you are desperate 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 you can up this line to much higher but that is completely your call now a variant for if you're playing as possibly a relegation championship team or a real underdog team or if you are simply trying to defend a game out it's much more possession focused this tactic you won't score as many goals but you will gain more possession that is going to be the defensive variant so the goalkeeper is going to be a sweeper keeper simply on support the wing back on the right is going to be a wing back on defend simply on the default the complete wing back is now going to have the same instructions but is going to be on on support so a little less attack and minded in the likes of Leif Davis both of these central defenders come back into the team as per the default instruction or the default tactic sorry and now we go with two DMs both on defend on the left is going to be pass it shorter tackle harder and also mark tighter and on the right hand side is simply going to be pass it shorter and also tackle harder so this is always going to be impossible to break down very defensive which is why this front four are still going to be quite attacking because we've got the back line really really secure and we've got protection ahead of them so on the right hand side is going to be Wes Burns the inverted winger on support on pass it shorter and cross less often this side is going to be an inverted winger again pass it shorter and cross less often there is going to be a pattern emerging as also Connor Chaplin is simply going to be our default attacker midfield player on support on pass at short so what's going to happen is these players are obviously going to be quite inside and they're simply going to be playing it around so much with just with absolute ease these two dms are going to get involved as well and it's going to be virtually impossible to get the ball off them which is why it's important having these players inverted coming in and getting the ball and simply passing it around and being very frustrating to play against and lastly the goal scorer to put the ball in the back of the net is going to be the advance forward simply on attack so again the clean slate style on the positive so it does go down one from attacking to positive when it comes to the mentality we're going to pass the ball into the space we're going to overlap left not overlap right i still can't stress enough i want leaf davis getting involved and contributing to the team because it's where he's at his best the final third is going to be set to low crosses and we're actually going to work the ball into the box in this variant the directness is going to go as you can expect is possession so much shorter the tempo is still going to be quite a high paced tempo on slightly higher but to counteract that and to make sure we are definitely a possession based team we are going to have the dribbling set to dribble less in transition very simple but very effective we've got to slow the pace down because we are trying to obviously run the clock down it is a defensive tactic if you are playing this from the obviously 
first minute, then don't have slow pace down on. Quite common sense, but I would like to mention it as well. Counter press is also going to be selected. They're going to play it to the centre backs as per while taking short goal kicks. Lastly, out of possession, we are going to rock the standard line in this variant and also the high press and line of engagement. We're going to go with more often when it comes to the trigger press and also prevent short goalkeeper distribution. And that is going to be your free tactics, but do stick around because there's no point getting the tactics without seeing the results. First season I'll show is going to be pretty straightforward. It is going to be Ipswich Town, but we enjoyed a fantastic season, only losing two out of a potential 46 games played in the championship. George Hurst comes in with 49 goals. Wes Burns picks up a 7.53 highest average rating. Leif Davis, 32 assists. Absolutely incredible from him there. We also score 154 goals, ranking us the best. Conceded only 42. We did pick up a couple of red cards, but over the season, it clearly didn't affect us too much. Unfortunately, in the other English Cups, we didn't do too great, but I'm not going to complain at all because we got the job done in the championship, which hopefully they do in real life. The squad is going to be your usual suspects getting the goals. It is going to be George Hurst with 49, Connor Chaplin with 37, who got a lot from playing in that attacking variant as well, playing as that shadow striker. 23 for Broadhead. We've got Wes Burns coming in with 20, 6 for Morsey, 4 for Leif Davis, but the assists obviously is going to be dominated by Leif Davis. Also Wes Burns, Connor Chaplin and Broadhead getting involved. Really nice to see a mixture of players picking up the ball and actually contributing to this team. Team stat wise, we are going to feature in five of them. That is going to be the fewest conceded coming in at 42. Quite close with Leeds though, to be honest with you. Possession wise, we're not going to have the most of the ball. It is going to be 53% of that ball. The fewest shots against are 325. The most shots are over 840. Quite a fair few shots at goal. The most goal obviously as we discussed in the first sort of homepage. Quite a fair few more than Norwich. And of course, we won the league, so we are naturally going to have the most points per game. Data hub wise, very impressed with this. Over three goals, 3.35 to be exact. Just under a goal conceded at 0.91. Over 18 shots every single match and a pass completion of 87.57. And I nearly forgot it, but look at that tackle win ratio. It's pretty neat. I thought I'd include a game against quite a good team in the championship. That is going to be Southampton. We come out and play some really good football, to be honest, at home and a very comfortable 4-0 win. You can see there how good quality these goals are as Broadhead picks it up. That's shocking from Southampton back line as Hurst picks it back up, back inside into Broadhead. Obviously, who is going to be coming in from that left-hand side, as we've seen very well in that match highlight there. Two more goals to come. Still one more goal in this first half as well. Connor Chaplin down the left-hand side, a ball inside the box, into Burns back stick and Southampton have an absolute nightmare defending our balls that we're putting in to the box right now. Clark wins it back into Morsey over the top. Great ball, great touch, great finish. Southampton demolished. Next up, obviously, a team linked to McKenna. That is going to be Manchester United. We had a very, very good season. Not only did we win the Premier League, we nearly went invincible, picking up 33 wins, drawing four, and losing just one game, which is going to be against Liverpool. It was quite a bad loss, I will show you. I'm not going to hide the fact, but still a very, very good season. Marcus Rashford doing something, which is really good. 39 goals across all competitions. Bruno Fernandes picking up not only 29 assists, but also a 7.51 highest average rating. In terms of the team stats, 126 goals scored, only 20 six goals conceded and over the season just the one red card not only did we win the premier league we also did win the carabao cup making it quite a good season for this manchester united team again with zero signings team stat wise we've got a feature in quite a fair few more than what i probably expected most points per game the most goals as we saw over villa i mean real real off season from man city fewer shots or most shots are at 749 the fewer shots at 186 the most dribbles being made at 711 the fewest conceded at 26 and also the most clean sheets coming in at 21 so we are literally doing everything to a very good level and also in the Premier League had quite a fair bit of possession. Data Hub wise is going to look even even better as we are going to concede a lot less of this team at only 0.68 conceded getting on for 20 shots a game resulting in 3.3 goals every single match and a pass completion of 87.35. Carabao Cup final time against bitter rivals Manchester City and we absolutely took the game to them right from the get-go it is going to be Rasmus Hoyland who gets that ball a great ball in from Shaw there and a great finish from him and his second goal was an own goal if I remember because I did play this I think it was Ake Sancho down the right hand side and yeah Ake it's a stinker lastly over to the real powerhouse of the video that is going to be FC Bayern over in Germany and again a very close invincible season close to it one loss is going to prevent that that is going to be against Köln away but other than that we won 31 out of a potential 34 games very very impressive Harry Kane with 40 goals Thomas Muller picking up the highest average rating the man that simply does not age Joshua Kimmich picking up 22 assists 
assists. And Kim Min Jae picking up a pass completion of 93%. Very good to see. 120 goals scored and only 20 goals conceded. Over the entire season, we do pick up two red cards. One more than obviously we did with United. But clearly, we managed it quite well as we actually do the treble. We win the Champions League against Barcelona and also the Super Cup against RB Leipzig. So we've got to take it. That wise, we're going to feature in, I think, the same ones as Manchester United. The most points at 2.79. The most goals are very convincingly over RB Leipzig. The most shots, the fewest shots against. Possession-wise, 56% of the ball. So that's probably what you could, sorry, what you could expect between 54 and 57% of the ball in the season you're going to be playing. The most dribbles being made at 645. And defensively, we were absolutely clear of everyone. Data hub wise, it is going to look very similar. Around the 3.3, but on this occasion, 3.5 goals per game, 0.59 conceded. So obviously the best defense is going to give us the best defensive record. Over 21 shots every single game, a pass completion of 87.66. And even the tackle win ratio, despite the two red cards, sitting quite high. Only the one goal in this Champions League final, but it is a big game show. So I'm going to show you Leroy Sane down the right hand side into Goretzka. Nothing to stay good could do. Did we deserve to win it? We'll have a little look. Their team they put out is honestly really, really incredible. Did we deserve it? I mean, that game could have gone to absolutely anybody, to be honest with you. A very close final. But let me know what you think of this video, guys. Do you prefer the tactics at the start or at the end? Be sure to leave a like. Enjoy the rest of your day. And I'll see you in the next one.